Steven Asante, the pepperoni pirate himself. Last we left off, he was uh, getting ready to get sent to rehab because obviously he was battling some demons and he was losing pretty bad. But hopefully this guy can get it together. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I'm, I still don't want to see people lose. Like, I want them to be able to get out of this situation. So hopefully he can turn it around somehow during this, but let's just get right into it. I'm currently on my way to the console on recovery in Houston. Dr. Nazardin has advised me to be admitted to their rehab program. So I'm gonna be evaluated for that. And I'm not looking forward to it. I know Dr. Now is right. And that I've been abusing painkillers. Do you think all those ratchet straps are for the people that just get really big? Like, because we see them ratchet them down to, like, stretchers. But I don't know how this guy ain't moving around since he's in a wheelchair. To the point that I've been risking my life every day. But even though I know that, I still want them. If I get the urge of wanting a narcotic again and wanting to get high, I will go back to the hospital and try to con another doctor. About trying to get the urge to exercise or burn some of this 800 pounds. I'm good at getting what I want. But I'm doing too much damage to my body, and if it's not going to be the weight that's going to kill me, it's going to be the drugs. Damn. Tommy Tutos is at least telling it like true. He's not sugarcoating it at all i mean this ends one of two ways you either change or you're dead so i i don't know if he's gonna get it together but he needs to someone has to help me stop ah, you know where we're going we are going in the gates of the drug console and rehab place to go see the doctor these gates yes those gates the gates of hell <laughs> i'm hoping that this is the day my life turns around. Selfie. He really stopped for a selfie. You're just lucky it's not the pearly gates, Gumby. You need to get your ass in there and get better. I want to get better. And I'm hoping I actually get help here. Yeah, yeah. Hamburger this is still helper? one of the scariest things that I've ever done. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Steven. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in today. So what's going on today? Oh, well, uh, I'm addicted to pain medicine. OK. How long has this been going on? Years. Yeah. Ever since my gallbladder surgery when I was like 25, that was the first time I ever got admitted to any hospital before. And to be fair, I don't think there's any way he's not in pain after looking at his legs. It's the way he's using it to escape his emotions that becomes the problem because chronic pain is kind of the name of the game when you get this big. That's when I first got pain medicine and I realized how good it feels and how much I wanted more. Sure. So what's been going on for a while? And now I've been trying to fight the urge of going back to like an ER for more. I just don't want to end up like all these celebrities like Prince and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, like, the next person to die. Yeah, the pizza pie Prince over here. To be fair, I think he's more along Lindsay Lohan's lines than Prince, but Steven's got his own idea who he is. But I don't get my drugs illegally. Right. It's legal. They're all prescribed. Correct. So you understand, just because a physician prescribes something... Doesn't mean... You're not an addict. That's right. Right. So most of your use has been intravenous at a facility. Correct. I just call a non-emergency ambulance maybe 10 times, 15 times a month. And the hospital... Which makes it that much worse, that much more immediate, and that much harder to stop. Hospitals can't turn me away because what I use for excuse is my right leg. So as long as I tell them my pain was over an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10, then they have to treat me. And when they give the injection through the IV, like, I'm on another planet. Just kind of takes your feelings away. 
Yeah, it numbs everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. not have to worry. Yeah, no worry. And they... I don't think this guy's had a worry yet anyway. His dad's taking care of everything. His little brother's too busy hating his guts to even talk to him, so... I mean, he's pretty miserable as a person. Maybe would or wouldn't give you a prescription for continued pain medication. Correct. How, how many tablets would you be given? 120, 7.5 milligrams. So you'd go home, a day or two later you'd call and go to the same facility or what? I don't go to the same facility, no. How? I've never seen a camel toe like that before, but it really does look like a hump on his foot. Because they already know who I am. And I had to go to a new place each time. When's the last time you went to an ER? Uh, maybe a couple days ago. Okay. So you've been through detox symptoms before? In between getting to the ER? I mean, tell me you about that. You mean when you're not on opiates for a while or whatever? Yeah, of course. You just feel like you're going to die. And how are you feeling now since it's been a couple of days? I feel okay, but I, I, my brain still, like, telling me, go back for more. We need to get him off of that, but we also need him to detox from Domino's. He said six larges a day. There's no question about it that you're a drug addict. Yeah, I am. And you need treatment for that. What we're trying to assess here is whether you need medical detox mm -hmm. and how much of it you need. Right, yeah. So tell me about depression. I don't think I'm depressed. No depression at all? I don't feel depressed, no. I really... At my heaviest, I wouldn't tell people I was depressed, but looking back on it, the way I felt, I think I was 100% in a depression state where I just didn't want to do anything, didn't want to see anybody, I didn't want to go anywhere. I kind of just hid away, and it's kind of normal once you get this big. I am, for the most part, a pretty happy guy. You say you're happy. This isn't what a happy person does to themselves. Yeah. As an addict, the way you've been doing things really isn't working, and... One thing we want to make sure before we help you is that we get a commitment from you that you're going to go through and follow through with our program and participate. So our program starts off with detox. You would then be doing individual sessions with our therapist because a lot of times with addicts, there's core trauma and things underneath that we're not, you're not addressing because you're not getting better right now. I definitely think he has some childhood trauma, but this guy's only commitment has been to chugging cola, so I'm not sure if he can really handle that. And so mm -hmm. if we don't address those yeah. things, you're going to stay in the same cycle. And it's just a brutal cycle yeah, to be in, as you know. So you have to be willing to talk and do the work because you're going to die. Yeah, I know. And there's no use in continuing down this path unless you just want to die. St. Joseph Hospital, they've accepted you. They're willing to take you if you're willing to go. How long? He got so excited because he's like, a hospital wants me? They all keep kicking me out. How long is the stay? So we don't know. It could be three days and it could be 10 days. You need 24-hour medical monitoring to get you through this detox. It's not locked down or anything, right? That's the yeah. psych floor. It's I the think. medic psych floor, but it is a true medical detox. Am I allowed to have a phone? Probably not. Do they have internet access at St. Joseph's? I don't know. Can you find out? This guy is more worried about posting more banana cream boob videos than going there and getting better himself. That's a secondary concern right now. Uh, not to me. I mean, I need to contact my people. Are you allowed to have your iPad? Your iPad and your iPhone and everything that you're talking about should be secondary right now to you. No, I because don't want to be bored either. You won't be bored. You're going to be busy getting better. Right now, the most important thing is, is saving your life. And this is saving your life. For you real? really need to work on you. That, well, yeah, I'm going to do that too. You don't. This guy's been working like crazy this whole time. Haven't you seen it? He's gone up and down, up and has. Actually, no, he only went down on the controlled diet. Dictate your detox, mm -hmm. OK? The professionals dictate your treatment and your detox, you do not. This game isn't gonna last very much longer. So you need to go to treatment and you need to, de need to detox. All right, I'll go. Okay. Good. That's the best thing for you, congratulations. That's the best thing for you. Thanks. Yeah.
I really didn't expect that. I didn't think he would go along with it. I thought he would just kind of be like, yeah, I'll do it, and then bail, which he still could do, but at least he's kind of copping up and owning up to what he's done so far. So I see a little bit of sadness in your eyes. What's going on? <laughs> it's a little scary, but it's okay. Yeah. You ready to do this? Okay. 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 Yeah. Steven's problem is extensive. He can't help but be in as much pain because of his weight. And he admitted that he does take opiates because it numbs his feelings. He doesn't want to it's a vicious cycle because when you're that big, you can't really get away from pain. You're just going to have to learn to push through it because there's always going to be some form of discomfort. Like my back, absolutely destroyed. Three bulging discs, a herniated disc, degenerative disc disease. That's what I did to myself. Like that's nobody's fault but my own. Feel. Steven was as honest as he could be, but I think there's a lot of trauma that he's not talking about. And if that trauma isn't addressed in treatment, then it's not going to resolve. Gastric bypass or a sleeve is not the answer. The answer is going through detox, then going through a treatment program and remaining for life and long-term therapy. So good luck. Thank you very right, much. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Yeah. Unfortunately, past failure for Steven is a big concern moving forward. Right. See you soon. Yes, yeah, see okay. you soon. See you both soon. Thank you. Steven has got to buy into this. He's got to realize that if I don't complete this time, I'm going to die. And I don't think anybody actually knows the answer. We usually think that the surgery is the only answer, but you really have to change your whole entire lifestyle, your whole outlook on life. It's like getting a second chance and you need to take advantage of it. And if he doesn't believe that, then he's gonna fail. Gotta put on speakerphone. Thank you, honey. I gotta leave soon. I figured I'd give you a quick call to let you know I'm gonna be at the hospital in the psych ward section, so I don't know if they're gonna allow me to have my tablet or not. Is it usually in the psych ward section? And his last thought was to call his pizza pimp, his dad or whatever. Daddy Domino's is on the phone. Okay, well this is a good thing and you need to do this, Steven. You're running out of chances. <laughs> yeah. Just a little nervous. Why are you nervous? There is no place better for you to be on this planet than where you're going. I know, I have to look at it that way, right? It's one of the only places where you can't keep killing yourself like you have been. Okay. You know, I kind of expected his dad to come get him and bring him back home to Rhode Island, but then I was thinking about it and I was like, huh, they're in Houston, so there's a bunch of hospitals around, so he probably wants to stay right where he is. Okay. Trust me, this is a very good place you're going, Steven. I trust you. I know. Okay. All right. Bye. I'm so scared right now. And I don't know what to expect or how hard this is going to be. But I don't have a choice. Either I do this or I'm going to die. I can't get over those feet, man. That has to hurt, though, so I kind of feel for him a little bit, but he still sucks as a human. My first day in detox, and this is my room, and that's the door I came through. I'm gonna give you a little tour here. That's the light, the chairs, they're very small. Maybe one day I can fit in chairs like that. Bro, you'd be shocked at how excited you get when you fit in a normal chair again. Also, how long do you think it's going to take for him to piss all these nurses off and they just want to get him up out of there? That would be nice. And up here is where the cameras are and that looks at me all day long. So I'm feeling quite tired right now because we had a long day today. I'm hoping I can get through the fire and beat this and learn a lot and recover. Otherwise. I don't think it's going to be very easy with the amount he was taking, but like, smile, you're on chubby camera, so at least they're watching you. Otherwise, things get worse and I can die. But I gotta focus on the now. In the now is, am I gonna recover or not? Or am I gonna give up and go home? I feel like I have the strength to do that, but nothing's easy.
this is day two in the Seki ward, drug rehab and the hospital. Pretty bad night. They kept coming in my effing room. Bruh, you're night one detox. Why would they not check up on you, make sure you're alright? You're also like 800 pounds, so you're probably the highest risk person in there. Every 15 effing minutes, I swear I turned into the spawn of Satan. I don't feel normal when I'm not on biking in the water or anything. Just started my Suboxone treatment. So that's supposed to wean me off the really hardcore pain medicine. Okay, so he's on Suboxone, which is a blocker anyway, so he wouldn't even be able to get pain meds if he left. So he should be alright with that. But uh, what I'm noticing with the Suboxone is that I feel normal, even on that. So far, so good. Yeah. Well, duh, you're day two. Suboxone will make you feel euphoria for like the first two or three days, at least from what I've been told. I've never been to rehab. And then everyone says it kind of starts doing its regular job and you no longer can chase that feeling, like chase the dragon, the Domino's dragon. But yeah, he's going to feel good for a couple days. If I have to guess, he's not going to turn into a total maniac until like five days in. Crossing my fat fingers. So hopefully Justin can take this chance to start his own thing. I feel like Justin's doing a lot better now that he's away from his brother. I mean, Justin hates his guts. To be fair, me and my brothers got along pretty well, but I was like the annoying little brother to my older brother. I think the funniest thing I ever did to him though was like pretend I had went away and I was listening outside his door when he was in there with his girlfriend. Until I heard you want it hard or soft. And I went bang, bang, bang. And I was like, it's not Taco Bell. Don't ask her what kind of taco she wants. And he just started screaming, get out of here. It was pretty funny. I'm happy Steven's in rehab right now. And I really hope this turns things around for him. But he's the most stubborn person I ever known. So I just hope they can break him. Because I haven't been able to. With everything going on, I really haven't had a chance to focus much on my diet. Because I have to focus on my work in setting up my store right now. I can't believe this guy's gonna run a store, but also his dad, total pushover. This guy's the easiest one to get one over on I've ever seen. And I don't think I've gained any more, which means my weight is doing okay. Hoorah. I'm not getting bigger and I can stay mobile and still get around. Because my goal was to not end up like Steven. I know Dr. Nozada wants me to come back for a checkup to see what my weight is and how I'm doing. But right now, I need to focus on getting my life back together. I don't want this. To be fair, like, when you're that big, like, just being able to walk is a huge accomplishment to you, and you're like, I'm not as bad as this person. You'll find any reason to say, like, you're better off than someone else. Four days in rehab, Steven. What'd I tell you? I'm a little more street smart than book smart. I knew how this was gonna go. I wanna go home from this place. Okay? Steven, calm down. They're treating me like a criminal! You have to calm down. This is not fair! I'm not a animal. I'm depressed now. No one's treating him like an animal. They're just not allowing him to have his way because his way's got him in the circumstance. This guy's the most overdramatic, obese idiot I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't think of any more creative words there. Stop acting like this. I'm gonna hang up if you don't calm down. I'm very sad, and I'm exhausted, and I'm trying to succeed, but I can't do it here. I can't do it! Freak out all you want. You're not getting any more drugs. This is a devil's playground. Satan dance with the Stromboli, buddy. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> I've been here for a week, and they say now the drugs are out of my system, and I'm free to go home. Probably out of his system, probably not out of his mind yet. I think most of them are like a month or two, aren't they? I'm not sure about that. 
This is one of the hardest things I've ever done. There are moments when I thought I was gonna die. I'm not laughing about that. I'm laughing about the Weight Watchers wench that just pulled him up in there and he got to go on a fat roller coaster that I never got to do. I never want to go through something like that again. And I'm just glad it's finally over. And hopefully, I could start looking to a better future. Out of the system, that guy still looks stoned as hell right there. And I'm supposed to stay on my detox drug so that the withdrawal doesn't start up when I'm at home. I want to be drug free. I went, I went drug free. I went drug, I went free. I guess Steven's a rapper or probably more an unwrapper at 800 pounds. Whee! Princess has already picked up my current prescription and said it'll be at my apartment waiting for me. So I don't have to worry about the urges that will tempt me to try to get back on pain meds. I'm looking forward to getting home, finally. I was really worried, too, because I got a cat to keep me company right before I went to the clinic to see Dr. Now. And then I This guy has no business with a cat. He can't play with anybody else's cat. What makes you think he can take care of his own? Ended up in rehab. So Princess has been taking care of her. There's no Subox in here whatsoever. You left those nasty jugs sitting there. That place has to stink to high hell. Oh, whiskers. I can't believe this. Princess didn't drop it off like she said. How does anyone expect me to do this if I don't have what I need? I'm going to tell her just how unacceptable this is and how disappointed I am. And find out what the heck is going on. Princess is telling me now the medicine's not ready. They need your insurance information right now. You filled so many prescriptions, nobody wants to fill anything else for you. Like, that's how this goes. You are looking at 150 total. First thing I'll try to ask Dan and see if he has $150. <laughs> that's gonna be highly doubtful. Bro, I can't believe there's four pee jugs just sitting there. He didn't bother to flush or nothing. Hello? You have no idea what I've been going through, okay? In that psych ward, uh-huh? Well, you're gonna hear me, and you're gonna hear me now. And you're gonna hear me loud and clear. Okay? Clean up your ears and clean them out good. I Bro, clean out your wiener wrinkles. Like, come on. I need $150 to fill my treatment medicine. Hey, do you got potatoes in your ears? I will relapse if I don't have that medicine here. Well, looks like you're gonna have to start selling feet pics like everybody else here. Is it going over your head what I'm telling you? The insurance is not covering my treatment medicine for some reason this month, okay? Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Oh my god, this little dick sneeze is annoying here. If my dad or princess doesn't get it, my prescription to me now, and I end up back on pain meds, it's because of them. And then when I overdose, it's gonna be their fault. Oh, this is one of those moments when you just wish you were dead, like, at this moment in time right now. Right now. Son. As long as you're not dead, you still have a chance to turn this around, but the way you're acting, I don't know how anybody could put up with you for very long. I've been staying on my prescription to fight the withdrawal symptoms, but it's still been really hard. Because Why does this guy have two deadbolts? Like, who's he trying to keep out besides the DoorDash driver? Because I have my moments where I want something really strong. 
and I'm having a hard time right now because I lost my temper at Princess again when she was taking a while to get my prescription. And she told me she was gonna resign as my personal care assistant. So I don't know who's gonna get my prescription for me now and take care of me. Bruh, Princess is a friggin' saint. As nasty as this place is, I wouldn't even step foot in there. You might catch gonocephala herpagitis in that place. She's coming over right now though for her last visit. She also said she's gonna take back my TV set since it belongs to the healthcare company and that they lent it to me. Plus size Pawn Stars is about to lose his TV. But I'm not letting her do that. She can drop off the pills, get me something to eat, and go. I'm sick of her anyway. Man. I like her. Okay, Asante, I picked up some last minute last stuff minute for day. you. After detox, Steven is still up to his old age. Whatever medicine the rehab doctor put him on, he loves it. And I just... Where's tomorrow's food? That's not enough. Got him a script, well, 120 pills, and I think they're all gone. His mood swings are worse than ever, and his behavior is particularly unacceptable towards me. So I'm no longer going to be treating him after today. Two weeks worth of food you'll go through in two days. Nobody's going to be here to check and make sure you're taking it in portion. Princess knows what's up. She's seen this play out a few times. That's going to be up to me now. It is. Right now, Steven is not sticking to his diet. I'm taking out pizza boxes, cookie boxes, brownie boxes, and everything else that his dad orders him. He's not working on changes right now. He's just transferring his addiction to his new prescription, and he's abusing it. So there's nothing I can do with that. I've been very patient with him, but Steven refuses to listen to me, so I just cannot work like that. Ain't nobody getting the security deposit back on this joint. Whoever paid for this is screwed. You do know that the good old TV was a loner. It goes with me today. Okay, I'm going to get your laundry. I'll be back. I'm going to get your laundry. All right. Is that? I need a police officer here immediately, please. My personal care attendant here bought me a TV, okay? She bought it as a gift for me, and now she's trying to take it away from me. Holy shit, we called the calorie cops again. What is it? How does this guy think this is going to play out? They're not exactly on his side. We're not in the junk food jurisdiction where they're just going to come side with you because you're 800 pounds. She's mad that she's losing her job. It ain't my problem she didn't do her job. Steven Asante. Thank you. Look here, Coxnot. I hope she gives you hell when she gets in that door. Who is it? Me. I'm instructed not to let you in yet until the police get here. Until so, the police get yeah, here? Yeah, Princess is trying to get in the house. What do I do? The TV's not being taken out until we see the proof. Okay, well, no problem. I'll wait till I get here. You want to wait? Of course, because that TV coming with me. The TV ain't going nowhere. It was a gift. It was a loner. Oh, Ghostbusters. He's got Ghostbusters on the floor. He's about to have no TV, but he's still got a tablet, so he should be all right. It was a gift. I'm going to call another caregiver and have them deal with you. We want to see the proof. That's all, baby doll. Grow up. You and your dad. How about that? Honestly, I believe that Steven pitched a fit about the television because he don't want to see me go. And he have expressed that in text messages and emails. It's not open. I don't think he cares about anybody but himself. But if he doesn't want to see you go, it's probably because he needs you. He's not exactly mobile and he can only do so many deliveries. He can't clean anything. He's not trying to do anything. I need my food stamp card and I want you gone. You can take your TV. It ain't even yours anyway. It sure wow. ain't. It's the company's. So. Come in. I would go in there, smash that TV, pay for it, just to prove that he couldn't have it, and I'll do what the hell I want. Take, take the gift. How about you just do what I say and get the hell out of my hair? Well, I thought you called the police. I did call the police. So now I got to stay here anyway, because they coming. 
So are you gonna put your clothes up or you want me to? Huh, Santi? If you're gonna release me, then I can go. But be I guess he called the cops and now he just wants to exercise his right to remain silent all of a sudden. You don't want me to help you or assist you with nothing, do you? I am calling the police back. Hold on. Hello. I'm trying to call the police and cancel my call. Yeah, they took back the gift. I don't give a Does it work that way? Can you just cancel the call? My fears for Steven is that he's not going to get any better. He's going to get worse, especially with the pills, because he's not managing how much is in his system at one time. It's easy for him to OD. Do not tell me every time I come, I don't want to open the door, and you're not responsive. I don't want to do it. So I refuse to watch him die. Last day, you want to call the police? All right. What a nice way to say goodbye, Steven. All right, bye-bye. This guy is the most unappreciative person I've ever seen in my life. Everyone's trying to help him. He just can't get out of his own way for nothing. Oh, my God. My legs are hurting. My legs are Can you do something for me? What can I do for you? I need something. I want to do something. My legs. Oh, my God, dope boy. Look. Your legs are going to hurt until you follow a damn diet. Have you seen the way those things look? Like they're not going to get any better until you lose weight. Okay. Yes, We're trying to get orders from Dr. Tom <laughs> to stay slow, deep breath. Okay. I see something. I see something. He wants some gelati. You need to calm down. So stop crying right now. Steven. You gotta be fine. Can you help me? What kind of help you need? Please stop <coughs> for me, please. <laughs> this is the problem with pretending you're hurting all the damn time, and now he's seeing things like the extra cheese Christ is appearing to him somehow. We will help you. How can you give me, me Just give me a 30 milligram toward on IV. Okay. Okay? <laughs> We're gonna give you some pain shot, okay? Yeah. All right, just relax. Just take it easy. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Clearly, Stephen hasn't detoxed, and he has not had a change in his pain medication addiction. He looks bigger now than ever, and he's even pulling his hair out again. He's reaching out for Dr. Now's hand. He's not letting you crush his damn hand. He's seen what you can do to a pizza box. So we will start the withdrawal and detox process now. But we can't ignore the possibility that his leg actually is hurting. He cries wolf so many times, you never know what's real with Stephen. So we'll have to find out if Stephen's life is in danger right now. What's in his mouth? It looks like he hasn't brushed his teeth in at least two months at this point. His body can go to shock where he won't be able to survive. So this is a very dangerous situation, but we're going to try to help him the best we can. He just has to cooperate, because if he doesn't, he's not going to survive. Wow, he stopped crying and got a lot better when you left the room, Doctor. Now, almost like that was a performance. Dr. Nazarian wants to check my weight and see where it's at. Uh-oh, we're in trouble now, because he does look bigger than he ever did, and his leg's gonna friggin' hurt. And why does he keep saying that? Uh but I'm a little nervous to find out. Hello, Mr. Asante. Hey. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, no. Oh, fuck me, Fritos. We gained a lot of weight, buddy. Oh, you were killing that diet at home, huh? I gained over 100 pounds back. I'm upset. Holy shit. I don't think Dr. Nazarian's gonna be happy about that. He's coming in later to tell me about my test results. And I'm really scared to face him right now. You should be. Hi, Steven. Hi. How are you today? Hi. Your test results are back, and here's the situation. So you have new blood clot in your left leg. You had the problem with right leg, now you get a problem with both legs. You know, from day one that you arrived here, you have gone so far backward 
that it's unbelievable. Again, oh. To be fair, I expect people to go up and down. I just expect them to take some level of accountability. And this guy is just demented. Like, nothing. He doesn't want to try for nothing. 100 pounds, and you're dealing still with the drug addiction, and you're still dealing with the food addiction. How in the world did that happen? I don't know. Since Princess quit, I believe everything went downhill. Uh, look, Steven, you need to have some sense of your own responsibility. And I mean, you're lucky Princess was even there. Or you would have been eating some of that friskies that the cat had when you run out of food. Stop blaming everyone around you. We are the one helping you. And right now, we have to intervene again, so you won't kill yourself. Steven has completely gone off the rails since I saw him last. His detox failed, so we'll have to help him to withdraw to save his life. And also put him on a controlled diet for the next one so we can get his weight down. Steven, I'm going to allow you to get back in the program again, because if you don't start to lose your weight now, you're going to die. And why did Doctor now give him so many chances? I seen him kick people out for way less than this. Right now, is a toss up between your pain medication killing you or your weight. So you want to do this or not? Yeah. Okay, then I expect you to be on your best behavior. All right, see you later. Okay. This guy does not know how to do best behavior. He is so self-centered, just like unbothered by what other people need or want him to do he's going to take advantage of everyone and he's going to use every angle he possibly can i've been back in the hospital for a month now and doctor now says i'm going home today so he's coming to check my weight and i'm supposed to leave i think he enjoys being in the hospital with that little call button because then he's people just at his beck and call 24 7. but i don't know why they're kicking me out again because I've behaved a lot better this time. And I stayed on the controlled diet like I'm supposed to. So I don't think this is fair. But he did say I can go back on the weight loss program. So I'm happy about that. I don't think he has any issue with the controlled diet because no one's there that he can manipulate into bringing him food at this point. All right, Steven, let's see how you're doing. Do you have a gown on or anything? It's not like you've never seen it before. To be fair, I don't think you've ever seen it before. Doesn't mean that everybody else needs to. No. Okay. okay. That's really good. Uh, that's about 80 pound weight loss. Hey. Over the past month, we have been able to get Stephen Wade going back in the right direction. I'm always happy to see people lose weight, but this guy rubs me the wrong way, like 100%. I don't know, I'm hoping he still does well, but he's just such a friggin' dickhead. You're going to finally start seeing the therapist I have sent to you a number of times, and you avoid it. If you want back on a program, you need to comply with everything. So you see the therapist in a few days. Okay. You start meeting with Really? I thought the therapist would have been like the first thing he did with this guy because he's clearly out of his friggin' gourd. With him and then you're going to keep making progress with your weight. And I want you to lose at least 40 pounds a month. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you did say you're going to send me home with some hydrocodone on, right? Right now. Oh, good God. Doctor, now kick him out of the damn program. Come on. Well, you don't have any reason to be on it. You're going to have to control your eating I'm, habit I'm, yourself. I'm actually, I'm done talking now. I just want to go home. Okay? Well, you're not done listening, though. You um, I'm, I know I disagree with the part. You know, I have nothing at home for pain. You have a drug addiction. What part of that you don't understand, Stephen? I mean, the Vicodin Viking don't give a damn about that. He just wants somebody to write that little thing on that paper and send him on his way. 
Okay, I do. Every day you live right now is a miracle. The miracle of your life will start next time you do this, or the time after that, or shortly after that. You know what my job is? To make sure it's not soon. Listen to me, you will live. Don't, you will die. So I want to see you in one month, stay off for the pain medicine, and see the therapist and lose 40 pounds in that time frame, okay? Ah, uh, 40 pounds is generous, considering that this guy could easily drop 100 because he got up above 800. So, Dr. Now's definitely taking it easy on him, but I feel like he's kind of a special case where if you push him too hard, he's just going to resort to his old ways. Okay. 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 Thank you. Steven doesn't like authority. Everything exists for his use and abuse right now. The core issue is a behavioral problem that we need to address before any changes are possible, which means psychotherapists have to work a little bit with him before we can expect any real changes. So if he fails to see therapists again this time, then this is all going to play out like it has in the past. Today, I'm seeing the therapist that Dr. Nazardin wanted me to start seeing. I've not really been interested in talking to anyone and I've been avoiding it. But I'm giving it a chance, because Dr. Now is giving me another chance. Uh, Chrome Cologne, I think that's what that one is, does not cover up the smell of cum and crust, so, uh, buddy, you're gonna have to try a little harder than that. And I don't want to lose his help. So I'm just cleaning up a little and making this place smell a little better so we can have a nice session. But I don't think talking about things is going to solve a whole lot. Come in. Hi, are you Steven? Yeah, how are you? Are Hi, you... Steven. I'm Dr. Paradise. Damn, it's not the hot one. Also, if my last name was Paradise, man, I'd use all kinds of pickup lines with that name. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Can I sit over there? Yeah, of course. So tell me how you're doing. I'm alive, so... Uh... Uh, tell me what you know about my being here. About my uh, addiction uh, to food? So I'm here to work. I probably wouldn't have sat on that chair if I was him either. It probably smells like butt cheeks and bacon. Work with you on your addiction to food? Probably my pizza. Okay. So let me take you back to, to your history a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, where did this start? For the most part, I was chubby even as a kid. Uh, okay. You were steadily gaining weight the whole time. Yeah, then things took a turn for the worse when I hit 30. I just knew that when you turn 30, that's when you stop feeling your body breaking. I mean, it's funny he says that, because that's what happened to me. I turned 30 and I was like, uh-oh, where do we go from here? We're kind of screwed from here on. Down. You had pain associated with your size? Yeah, I do. Uh, right now, there's a blood clot in this leg and there's a blood clot in this leg. They yeah. both look very painful. It is. OK. Yeah. So those got painful. Yeah. And you got prescription medicine for it. Yeah. I was addicted to the IV Dilaudid stuff. I was taking so much it could kill anyone. So I went to a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. So how are the drugs compared to the food? They're both about self-control, right? Yeah, and I wish I can grasp on to the food addiction like I did the drugs. Oh, shut up. You're asking for prescriptions every chance you get. Like, this guy is so... He's either delusional or he actually believes the stuff he's saying. Because with his, like... I know with food addiction, like, it's tough because you have to eat. But he's also this size, so he's going to be in pain. There's, like, no way around it. You feel like the drugs are not an addiction now? No, they're not. I conquered okay. that, and I want to try to avoid being in the hospital as much as I can now. So what's the biggest barrier to that? Uh, there really isn't any barrier. I just want you to remember that. I want oh, you to OK. Believe I can also write that down. So you're kind of a I think you fell a little short of conquering anything here, Lord Farquaad. Smooth talker. Yes. Yeah, I want to Is make it? sure you're not smooth talking yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, you seem to be able to convince people of stuff. You think that has helped you or hurt you? Oh, it's hurt me, I think, more. 
Do you guys think that guy's a smooth talker? Could he talk you right out of your drawers? Because I can't see that happening. Convincing yourself of stuff that's not true, right? Yeah. And I think our job is to figure out the conditions under which you succeed. Mm -hmm. And then also identify those places where you seem to fall off the wagon, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Where you go wrong. Yeah. And it's always about, I guess, feeling better, right? It's a version of that, the food. When you um, lost the weight in the hospital, how did that feel? Really good. I felt like I was walking on clouds. I felt lighter. You were lighter. I'd pay a lot of money to see this guy try to walk on anything elevated off the ground. I was lighter. So tell me what your next pothole is going to be. What's the next thing that's going to trip you up? Hopefully nothing. Okay, now that's the sweet talker. You're even smiling, right? But be I see a lot of Papa John's potholes in this guy's future. Be straight up. Obviously, I have to find a way to eventually say no. Like, I conquered the drug addiction, just gain control. Right, and you've had But with the pizza, I just, yeah, I have had success. And that's what I have to keep thinking about. Like, I have done it. What I want you to do. Look, you do have to latch on to the small victories and kind of pile them up. But at the same time, he hasn't had any kind of success yet. He's only been successful in the hospital. And he's not doing, like, a damn thing for himself outside of that. Before next time. Mm -hmm. Is to remember those times when you've had a success. Yeah. And I want you to be really aware of those, those potholes. So sometimes what happens is people are walking into potholes, they don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. To be fair, we're pretty sure where we're putting our feet. Because if we don't, we're going down and we're not getting back up. And then the next time they walk up to it, they see it, and they still fall in. Yeah. And then the next time they walk up to it and they see it, and then they walk around it. And that's what I need to so learn. So we've, we've got to identify your pothole. Yeah. And identify those conditions where you can be a success. And you've done it. And I think you can do it outside of a hospital. Yeah. You identify as pothole paradise. I ain't looking at that thing. Totally. It was good to meet you. You too. Thank you, Dr. Paradise. Thanks. Thank you. I feel like I've been doing good over the last week. I'm sick to the diet, and I haven't gone to the hospital for pain meds. I have found a few around here and took them, but it's been minimal. Oh my god, he's playing hide and seek with the Vicodin. This poor kitty, too, living in the pee jug palace here. So I'm doing good. And I'm really excited right now, because my dad flew into town today, and he's coming to see me and help find me a new place to live. Because this one has just become too expensive to stay in. Hey. I wondered how he was affording any of this, but I would be would be willing to bet it's Daddy Domino's over here. Oh my God! What? This place is disgusting. Woo! It smells like cat piss. This That's Stephen piss. How stinks wicked bad. But after this floor. This kitchen floor is filthy. I don't know. When I walked into Stephen's apartment, I expected to look clean. But I didn't have no idea what I was walking into here. I oh, yeah, because this guy's a regular frigger, friggin' butler of obesity. You expect him to be around here just cleaning everything and not shoveling 800 pounds of moldy feet everywhere. I want to kill him. Between paying for his place in Justin's store, I'm going broke. I ain't gonna get sued for this pump too on top of me being so You ain't getting shit back on that one, buddy. He's done peed everywhere. What are you gonna do? Like, there's nothing you can do. And also, why are you paying for grown-ass son's stuff? Tell them to buy their own or pay for their own stuff. Dirty. <coughs> it's okay. I mean, would you take the mop of floor two minutes? I almost lost my house. <coughs> because of money I've been dishing out to try to keep this in keep you in this apartment my my dad is just very upset and frustrated and scared but I know he loves me bro Steven don't give a damn if you go homeless for anything he don't care about you I don't know why you can't see this and I love him too I didn't mean to get upset like that all right all right, I'm going to try to get you an apartment. Okay. If I... 
Also, I love the Beatles bowl cut for the biggins. That shit looks so funny. Can you do the right thing? I wouldn't even be frustrated right now. Yeah. When I came here tonight, I thought I would see you a little thinner than what you were. Oh, yeah. He turned into a gymnast overnight, Pops. This guy's doing cartwheels last week. You should have seen it. Yeah. But you're still the same. Yeah. Done. If you dickhead. keep prolonging this, prolonging this. You ain't gonna be here much longer. No, I know. And that's another thing I got on my mind. How much longer do you got? And you look high. But I'm not. Look, I think his father, like his heart's in the right place. He just don't understand that by caving and giving Stephen everything he wants, he's not doing him any favors, to be honest. Asking any questions right now. Because I can only take so much. Do you ever look at yourself in the mirror? Be honest. Nope, that's blasphemy. The mirror doesn't exist to us. Yeah. What's it look like? Should you look like that? No, 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 no. No. See this? See all this? Yeah. Imagine all this gone and it's all as big as this now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could you imagine it? No, it would be nice though. It would be, wouldn't it? Like, I don't wish this hell upon anyone, but you have to want to save yourself. Like, I can't say it enough. I can't sit here and just, like, I root for everyone, but when you act like this, like, I'm gonna get mad at you. Today is a very busy day for Steven and me. We are looking at apartments, and then he has his therapy appointment. So it's if you see this guy moving into your apartment complex, what are you doing? Because you know that he's not going to take out his trash. He's going to give you friggin' roaches. A lot in one day for him. And I could tell he'd rather be at home doing nothing. Duh. But he has to do this so he can get over it. Hi. Here's my son. <laughs> That's the property oh, manager. Oh, hi. How you doing, my friend? Good. How are you? Good. Good. We try and pull the golf cart over here? Yeah, just I think you're better off backing it in. You expect this guy to get on an effing golf cart? You got a freaking death wish? Right here. You guys need a hand? I'm having a hard time moving around and doing this. The legs. So I have to be careful. But I... These guys are trying to pop a wheelie on that damn golf cart. He's trying to do some stunts. I really don't think this is a good idea. I right, just hold on. All right, ready? Let's go play golf. All right, let's do this. Oh my God. All right, it's gonna be a little, little bumpy. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh. Off-roading with obesity, baby. Let's go mudding in this damn thing. Oh my God, oh, oh my God. It should be okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go up a little bit of a, of a yeah. curb here. I want you to get hurt. Oh, 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 oh. He slid down that thing like a stripper on a pole, man. He went right. Somebody come get her. She dancing like a stripper. Oh. <laughs> you all right? Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, man. Come on. Oh, no, Cole. No. No, I can't. You can get a no, car. my whole body. I can't. No. Are you okay? No. My arms and everything. No, Cole. I mean your arms, you land it right on your ass. There's plenty of cushion in there. Oh my lord, you need um oh, ambulance. Need oh ambulance? god, yeah. Oh god. Ooh. I can't believe this. I don't think he fell for real. Oh god. But I don't know. Because Steven has done this so many times. Nah, he went on the fat slip and slide, all right? I don't think he pretended that part, because you do anything to avoid the ground when you're up above 600 pounds. And if you get on that sucker, it might be the last time. You ain't getting back up. I'm not sure what to do right now. Oh, if he's hurt and I ignore it, he can end up with an emergency. But if Lift he's taking, it. then he'll get more pain meds like he wants. Oh. And I feel like Ida Joyce is the wrong one right now. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. It hurts. Oh my god. Oh, I can't. It hurts. What hurts? 
everything in my bag and stuff. Did they call? Yeah, they're here. They're here now. They're here now. I don't doubt that it hurts, but I don't think he is hurt, you know? Oh, I gotta go to the hospital. My whole body hurts. My back and my legs. <laughs> yeah. More on my back. You think that we can walk over there? You kidding me? Why are you yelling? Because I hit the ground hard and you want me to make a miracle? Miracle. All right, we need we need you to make more stuff with Miracle Whip. That's the damn problem. I need to go to the hospital. I can't believe this. I think Steven's up to his old games, and this is all just an act. His leg excuse does not work anymore, so he has to come up with something new, and I have to put an end to it. Steven, you're too big to lift, and they can't get the ambulance over here. But I'm going to tell you right now, I, what I can do is pull the van up over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Oh, God. Yeah, no problem. I'll get him into the van. Um, you guys help me get him up. Then you can... To be fair, with the help of a few people, it shouldn't be as hard. Go, he'll be okay. Let me get behind him. I don't know, but... <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Go. What about lift? Yeah, that was there. Are you usually good standing? Yeah, once he's standing up, he's fine. Are we ready? Damn, he stopped crying real quick whenever he got in the van. How did it stop all of a sudden? He had to be putting on a show. Don't go away. The pain goes I away. Shut the up. Because if you was hurt real bad, I'm going to explain something to you. You're a you wouldn't be able to get up off that ground, and you did. What was I supposed to do? Stay there? All right, whatever. Things happened. Did I know I was going to slip off the golf cart? No. Did I have a feeling? Yes. You should have strapped in there, buddy. Uh... To be fair, they probably shouldn't have, like, set him up like that for the wheelie off the off-road tricks with the go-kart there. But it was so glorious, man. I'd pay to see it again. I want to see him try to do it again today. You listen to me. You're not missing your therapist appointment. I already called and told him that we will be there in 10 minutes. And he needs to come outside and get you. If you still think you need a hospital after that, I'll take you. I am not talking to Dr. Paradise. Well, if you don't, you really ain't going. I'll take it right home. Then I'll go my way. You're play fine games. right now. Play games. You're not in pain right now. Oh, no, I'm not. No, you're right. I'm not. This guy throws temper tantrums so much. It just irks me to death because he's a grown friggin' man. I'm not talking to nobody. You're not going to get to avoid him. You hear me? Oh, God. <sighs> Make it stop. Is that him? Yep. Hi. How you doing, man? Crappy now. Why are you crappy? I slipped off the golf cart and I hit the ground really hard. I'm sorry to hear that. Is this your dad? Yes. I'm Dr. Paradise. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Steven. So my hope is that you want to come in and talk to me. Yeah, I'm not. Damn, imagine I just realized that he named him after him. I could see the resemblance. Um, I can't go in, I, bro, not right now. I hit the ground pretty hard. I need to get checked out. We've got a scheduled appointment, so I'm going to meet with you and your dad together, uh, or I'm going to meet with just your dad, but I'd rather you be there. I cannot do that today, okay? No chance? No. So you want to wait in the van while I talk to your dad? No, I need to get going to the hospital. To be fair, I think he did more damage to the ground than it did to him. Steven, do you want to come into my office, man? When they're the hospital anyway, they can do it. Steven, the best thing for your son right now is for you to come in and talk to me. Can we do that? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Why don't you come in? You Just can... wait here. We'll be out in a half hour. You are welcome to join the session whenever no. you want. No, I'm not. I got to go. Do what you want. It's good to meet mm. you. Let's yeah, talk. You too. <laughs> what are the odds that he actually waits this entire time? Or do you guys think he's going to call it the damn EMT's bag?
So what I saw in the car there, is that familiar? Him sort of demanding something from you and it feels like you can't say no? Oh yeah, it's basically what he does. The thing that I noticed though is he's very dependent on other people to make those demands. He needs That's what I'm saying. Like how does he keep getting his damn way? There's no way he could need help from everyone and still friggin' push you guys to do exactly what he wants all the time. Your help to do this stuff. Yeah. He needs accomplices in this behavior. He needs doctors to prescribe the medicine. He needs somebody to take him to the hospital. I think that's where, what we can work on, is increasing our ability to, to tell him no. I had a oh my God, he did friggin' call. I don't think anybody's ever told him no in his life. The spill, I fell off a golf cart and I'm hurting really bad. Yeah, I slipped off from the back. I, I, I hit the ground pretty hard. I think what his problem is, is he gets... I don't think he could reach if he tried to hit it from the back like he just said. When he's in the hospital, he's surrounded by people. Yeah. When he goes home, he don't have nobody there. Yeah. So he get, I think he gets a lot of depression, mm -hmm. and that's when he eats because he's by himself. Yeah. He's lonely. Yeah. I wonder if this is the... This must be the ambulance right now, you think? Yeah. You think he got to 800 pounds because he's lonely for leftovers. Hell to the no, buddy. That maybe a little bit of it, but that ain't why he got to 800 pounds. We should come up with a plan right now and decide what we're gonna do and then just do it and he'll talk and him and haw. But if the plan is that he shouldn't go to the hospital, I think we have to consistently repeat to him that you're in charge. I slipped off a golf cart as it was driving and I hit the ground really, really hard. What's so hurting on you right now? My back and my legs. I can't believe he is wasting the EMT's time like this. Like he's wasted enough medical professionals time at this point. He's fine. Yeah. Hey, Captain Cooney. Uh, you don't mind talking to me? No. It's kind of clear. Okay, you're, you're, you're the, the, the parent of yeah. this person? You guys are going to understand something. This is bull He's addicted to a drug. What are you talking about? He wants that. He wants... What? I mean, people... I guarantee he's hating every second of this because he saw the light shine from the heavens. He was about to go to Happy Land again, and now his dad's outing him. What's that drug so he can get? Oh. Floaty. Yeah, whatever you say, buddy. I swear Do to God, you go with these guys, I am going back home, and you're going to be homeless. Because I'm. you're going to be all done. You're going to make that decision yourself. You're going with them, go. I'm going back home. And you lost everything. I mean, it actually kind of makes me happy to see his dad draw that line in the sand because he's been such a pushover this whole time. Okay, whatever. Choice is yours, ultimately. Yeah. If that's what you choose. No, I'll go with my dad. So get that off your neck. You don't need it. You didn't have it on all this time. So I'm going to see you. Kind of surprised that he made a rare good call on his part. Next week? Yes. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Okay. Feel better. I want this to be just like a little setback, okay? Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? And remember, like every time you take the painkiller, it pushes you a little bit further from your goal. Okay. Okay. I'll see you soon. Okay. okay. I mean, life's full of setbacks and regrets. You can either choose to move forward or you can choose to sit here, throw this pity pizza party for yourself, and then eventually there'll be nobody there but you, and you're lucky you're even there at that point. I'm helping Steven move because he's not capable, he's handicapped. And he couldn't lift up a box if he wanted to. So I basically got to do everything. I'm going to try like hell to get all this done tonight so I can go back to Rhode Island tomorrow morning. Oh, my God. They brought the chubby cinder blocks from the first one. What? We're foundation fat again in this one. That's a good move. Because I need to get back to Justin. I worry about both of my sons. But Stephen Moore, because he's so bad off right now. So it scares me. Like this? Against the wall? Correct. 
I'm sad to see my dad go. Is that the same bed than the first one? I thought this thing was busted. As much as we frustrate each other, I like it having is. him around. And I know he just wants the best for me. So I want to make him proud. But there are moments where I just want painkillers or to eat that I can't resist it. And I don't know how to change that. All right, man, I'm going to go. All right. All right. Wanna, next time I see you is when you get the operation done. All right. See about that. But also, if you wanted to change your life, if you actually made some genuine effort, you'd work in a positive direction. You wouldn't have to sit here and feel sorry for yourself and woe is me, all that. Because nobody is beyond saving. Like, you have to want to do it. That's why I always say the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. But this guy's got, like, one foot in, and that foot's pretty damn big, so it's pulling him in there. Bye. Do the right thing. All right. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. Diet. It's been a month since... Cocoa Puffs and Coke ain't gonna do it, buddy. Oh my god. You're a freaking bat. Mmm. You're a f mm. Be nice, Sean. So I left the hospital. And now, I'm supposed to see Dr. Nazardin for my checkup. Yes, crotch cologne. That's the ticket, buddy. But I don't really want to because I'm not sure I'm gonna have made the progress I was supposed to. But I don't wanna make him even more upset by skipping. I think he probably looks just about the biggest he's been, but maybe that's just because I'm looking at his calves. Maybe he did lose something. No, he had the Cocoa Puffs and Coke. No way in hell. So I'll go face the music if I have to. I was supposed to lose at least 40 pounds and get under 670. Oh, baby. Hi. And I'm not sure if I did that. But I do feel like I made some progress. Oh, shit. Isn't that higher than he started in the first place? 21. That's you really do not good. Me? I've gained some of the way back again. And I really don't know how that happened. If I didn't think Dr. Nazardin would be angrier if I left. Let's unravel the mysteries to how this happened, genius. And I would. Because I don't want to face him right now. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, sir? Well, first let me say, because I know you're going to bring it up, I... Damn right, you're gonna have to face this fat firing squad real quick. I gained 21 pounds because I slipped up a couple times. But I'm back on track now. However... Oh, wait, wait a minute. How many times have you been back on track? No, uh, I really... And yeah. how, how many times? Well... Let me give you some statistics, okay? You came to Houston 10 months ago, and you were 730 pounds. We yep, we've officially gained weight since we joined the pizza program. We help you to lose 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. Then you gain it all back and more. So we got you back to 729. Now you gained 20 pounds in one month when you were supposed to lose 40 pounds. 20 pounds ain't that bad, because then we put on like 80 some the first time. So you make no progress, and when we do help you, you immediately undo it. Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? A absolute failure. Mm -hmm. Absolute failure. Well, I can yeah, explain. Yeah. Next time, it's going to be 800 pounds? Absolutely not. Next time, it's going to be under, probably 600 or under 600. Why are his eyes closed while he's talking? I don't think he even wants to look at Doctor now. That man's shooting laser beams right through you, like lipo. Well, definitely. And that's never going to happen. Yep. And you don't believe it yourself either. I do want to commit to working out now, but I'm having a hard time. Because I obviously don't have any more medication anymore. And I... Just need, um, like, you know, a refill to help me out, like, with... Oh, that's the ticket. He needs medication for the muscle. Give him some damn protein, like, drinks and send him on his way. Working out. You actually asking me for pain medication? Yeah, I want to work out two times a day. All right. 
I really do. I really See, do. In I wanna, past month. I commit to this, though. Okay. Uh, uh, I know you don't believe In me. past month, how many times you went to emergency room? I have been to the emergency room. Hmm. Maybe uh, five times. Holy shit. Five's way too damn many, and I think he's been more than that anyway. Five times in a month. So you go to one hospital, they recognize that you're a drug addict, they go to another one. Let me just give you something. This is a prescription monitoring program with the state of Texas. You receive 39 prescriptions from 17 different doctors. Holy hell, how'd they ever let that go through? I was wondering when this was going to come into play. Because I know this is a thing today, I just wondered if it wasn't back then and he was just getting away with it. Mm -hmm. And that uh, ring a bell? Well, it, obviously I can see it on the paper. It can't be a lie. Then you go to the next page. You have received Tylenol and Codeine, 259 tablets. You have received <laughs> Tramadol, 1,045 tablets. How's this guy's liver not shutting down with all that damn Tylenol he's taking at a time? Codone, 970 tablet in the state of Texas. If you have prescription from any other doctor than one doctor, we are not allowed to prescribe a pain medication. Mm -hmm. So this is the end of it. You have exhausted lifetime hospital privileges to be admitted. So your days of abusing system are over. Okay. Damn, at least somebody finally shut him down. Like, this went on way longer than I thought it would have. Thank you. Have All a right. nice day. I want to leave. You got that? Yes, I'm done. Thanks. Okay. This information is going to data bank. Okay. And once I put this in the database, the next time you do this, you'll be arrested. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. No. Hey, hop to Humpty Dumpty. Just don't have another great fall. I feel uncomfortable. Uh, I feel uncomfortable. I want you to come with me. Let's go down the hall. Where? And just walk with me. Uh, I'm going to show you something. OK. Make me walk. I thought you wanted to work out twice a day, buddy. This walking shouldn't be nothing to you. Now, stand over here and look at that mirror. Why? Look at yourself. <laughs> Look. Look at what you have done to your body. To be fair, it is so hard to look at yourself when you get to that point because you're just like, you don't, I mean, you know who's staring right back at you in the mirror, but it, it's like just a shot to the heart. Like, it hurts so bad to see yourself like that. Tell me, what do you see? A big failure. You're not looking at yourself. Come on. Keep looking at yourself. Okay. You see yourself there? Can I step away from the mirror? You had enough? You look enough at yourself? You oh. see what you really need to see? Yeah, I don't want to look at me. <laughs> look at you. I mean, if that's not a reality check on how serious you need to take this, I don't know what will be. This guy's playing way too many games, and then his brother's literally playing games. Body. Look at your stomach. When you came, it wasn't hanging that far. Now it's hanging all down. Mm -hmm. Look at your leg, swollen, red, lymphedema in both of them. Looked like an elephant's leg. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look human anymore because what you have done. Mm -hmm. You know, you're no. not seeing yourself the way you are. Have you seen anybody? I don't think his belly's hanging any lower than we started. It was definitely touching his knees at the start, but his legs are pretty inhuman. They kind of look like a kangaroo's legs a little bit if you add, like, 100 pounds. But you do that to their body? No. Well, you did that all to yourself. Mm hmm I don't want to look anymore. And what did it take to realize that you're killing yourself? Mm -hmm. Obituary? No. I never look in the mirror, so, yeah. Can I sit on that? Yes, you can sit. Back is coming out. He takes plenty of selfies, though, but I guess he doesn't look at the bottom. Because it's funny, he looks kind of skinny from, like, here up. Like, he don't look that big. Okay. 
So you're not able to control any of your impulses. You're not interested in giving up your drug habit. And I don't see any way out. I don't know how we're going to save you from yourself. I need help with uh, No, you had all the help you're going to get. This addiction is going to kill you. You need to decide. Nobody's going to save this guy but him, and he's his own worst enemy for sure at this point. To give up your food addiction and drug addiction before it's too late. Think about what you saw in the mirror. If you want that to be you, that's fine. You can do what you want and find a way to kill yourself on your own. But if you come back here, I expect to see you down a good amount of weight. If not, we're completely done. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy's kind of drug his feet the entire time, no pun intended. I wish he would get out of his own way and actually try. Steven is at a very important crossroad right now. His pain medicine has been shut off, so he doesn't have any choice but to give up this addiction. And he can either get with the program and work with us to get in the right track to live, or his chances are up. After this, there are no more opportunities on this program. When I got home after seeing Dr. Now last week, it took a little while, but the stuff he said sunk in. That's good, because it had to get right with you at some point. I mean, to be honest, people usually F up at the start, but this guy's been a hell of a roller coaster ride, and it's not just that he's not trying to lose weight, it's that he's nasty to everyone around him that makes him kind of suck. Two. It was really hot at first, not having any painkillers anymore. And I'm still really struggling. But I feel like I'm waking up a little, like some haze is clearing in my head. I bet it don't feel good, but also, I think I just saw single-ply toilet paper. How the hell is that working out for you? And I don't want who I saw in the mirror to be me. So I decided to make a change. And I'm doing it by throwing out all the stuff that's bad for me. Got a lot more so. I applaud him for doing that because that's a first, like a big first step. But also, I just saw a whole pack of toothbrushes. It didn't look like a single one was out of there. What does it go? A lot more bad stuff. <laughs> by doing this, I'm actually. I'm telling you, you'd be shocked at how much them chairs can hold up. Because he's one cheek in it right now with 700 pounds. He's got a fridge full of Slim Fast. Don't look like a single one's been done. But I'm hoping so badly that he takes this serious this time. Actually conquering my addiction for once. In you go, addiction. See ya. Bye. Down the drain. Bye. Like we don't have any kind of brand loyalty here either. For the first time in a while, I want to live more than anything else. And once Dr. Now started to read off how many painkillers I had taken in just a month, I realized how risky this has been for me. I mean, that'll definitely wake you up. But also, where'd Whiskers go? Because I hope he went on that damn bed. Because it was a lot. This is my hydrocodone bottle, 120. And I don't have any more. Oh, wow. I didn't realize this was that many. Well, that's scary. I want my... 120 ain't nothing. Didn't he say he took like 900 and something? Life to change. And when I go back to see doctor now, I know I have to have lost weight. So I'm eating right and trying to stay active. Uh, uh. Alright, he's mobile, but also he should have shoes on. Because I, when my feet would swell and my legs would swell, I would notice walking across stuff like that was pure agony. So I guarantee his feet hurt really bad right now. If he had on sandals, it wouldn't be as bad. Uh, I'm out here in a freezing cold rain. And... Uh, each step I take, my feet have this burden sensation, and all I want to do is go back inside. But 
I want to be able to tell Dr. Nazar that, that I'm walking through the fire this time and not being a failure and a loser. Actually, I'm really proud of him. I didn't expect him to get here from what he's done so far. But if he could keep going in this direction, I'll change everything I've said about him. Not everything. I want to show everybody that it's possible to change. And maybe that could lead to good things, like repairing my relationship with Justin. But I know I have to start taking responsibility for myself. Uh, I don't know if Justin will ever stop hating your guts, but that guy is like, I don't know, he's probably right up there about as weird as you are with the whole camera thing he did with Doctor Now. Prove I can get ready for weight loss surgery. <sighs> Today I'm at the doctor's office to see how much weight I've lost. It's been two months since I saw Dr. Now last. I've not had any pain meds and I've stuck to the diet. Steven Asante? And I feel- You know, to be fair and to give him a fair shot right here, he does look a tiny bit smaller to me, but I'm not sure. I think he lost some weight. I think he actually tried this for a good time. I feel like I'm doing better. But I have absolutely no idea if I made a lot of progress or just a little. And I'm so nervous right now. Because I know everything is riding on what the scale is about to say. I was at 750 the last time I weighed in. And Dr. Now told me to lose a good amount of weight on my own. To prove to him I'm finally 100% committed to the program. Oh shit, he got under 700. Uh, did he, he did that at the start too. But he should be proud of himself. That's a big accomplishment. Oh. Ha. 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 I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I just really hope this is enough for Dr. Now to think I'm ready for weight loss surgery. Hello. 100 more, you'll be able to see your way. Hi. How you doing, Steve? Uh, good. Okay, so you lost 73 pounds and a bit over two months. That is a move in the right direction. So I'm proud of you. You show me that it's possible for you to control yourself. But I still need to see more from you before I know you're ready for weight loss surgery. Yeah, I don't think he's ready, but I bet it means a lot to him to hear a doctor now say he's proud of him. My surgeon told me he was proud of me the last time I saw him, and that meant a lot to me because I didn't know how he really felt about if I had been done good enough or if I wasn't quite there. But I've lost 320 pounds at this point. Okay. Okay. But it's imperative to keep seeing the therapist. But you're doing good. Steven still has a long way to go, but for the first time since he has been in here, I don't feel him optimistic and like there is a chance to help him right now. So this is a good momentum and I want you to lose 40 pounds over the next month, okay? okay? Okay, another 40. Just dropped 70. This should be no problem for him. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. The chances of success with Steven are depending totally on him. And hopefully we can take a step-by-step -step approach to get him to become a healthy person. So he can start to lose weight and change his life. That's the first time I've seen Dr. Now smile at me. I know this chance is a gift, and I'm not going to do anything to screw it up. Good. Maybe he finally changed his ways and is actually taking some accountability. Doctor now, I mean, I've seen him smile here and there, but generally, he's kind of a stone-faced killer, you know what I'm saying? As I get further and further from my drug addiction, I feel like things are getting clearer for me. And one thing that's really been on my mind is my relationship with my brother. Aww. I think what hurt the relationship with my bro is um, I was a big bully, and I drove him insane. 
How do you bully your brother, man? I love the hell out of my brothers. To this day, I'll friggin' kill somebody for my brothers. No questions asked, whatever. I mean, when I was younger, I pretty much fought all their fights for them anyway. I know I haven't been good to him. But I need him to know how much I love him. And I really want him to try and get weight loss surgery too. Hi. How's your store doing, Justin? Very good. Made a lot of hundreds today. Hey. Big Bill Justin over here with these blue faces. So how much did you lose? I was down 73 pounds. So, have you been watching what you've been eating? Have you been trying to lose weight? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's not easy, believe me, I know. But, uh, I just want to tell you that I really hope you I get the surgery and... Uh... I just want you to do the right thing, all right? And I just want you to know that I care about you. This guy cries a lot. He must be a Pisces like me, man, because I'll cry like a little punk in a sad movie. Uh, what works. I just want to apologize for everything I put you through in the past. I'm not somebody you say that to and you automatically get forgiveness from me. You should know that. No. This kid's cold-blooded. He's a like, God forgives. I don't. I understand. And I will earn your forgiveness. You have to. That's the only way you get it back. Just keep doing the right thing. And I love you as a brother. All right. Please do this, okay? I'm planning on getting the surgery. That's awesome, Justin. Man, yeah, close. I have to update my will first. <laughs> it's going to be. I don't have a will. Should I have one of those at this point? Very, very exciting for that day to come for me. I'll be down. I'll be down there soon. So, uh, have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. These two have the weirdest relationship, but also it looks like Steven lost all the weight in his face. Once you stand in the sun, where's more, you feel the heat better. I'm not sure if I can believe anything Steven says because he has mood swings, he has different personalities. It depends on which Steven he is today. I know right now he is making better choices, but Steven has to keep doing the right thing if he wants to get my trust back in. That's a hard thing to do. Steven has to earn it. I mean, it, no matter how long it takes, he still has to earn it. Uh, I'm so hoping Steven and Justin both get this done. Because, I don't know, man. I there's He's so manipulative, but I still want him to win. For whatever reason, I just don't want to see people suffer like this. Oh, I got it. <laughs> but despite everything that Steven has done to me, I do want the best for him, no matter what. I love my brother, and one of the things I want the most is to repair my relationship with him. And I know that it's gonna take time, and that there's a lot to prove. So that's when I'm- I mean, that's all right though. You don't have to live with all that regret. You just have to focus on moving forward. Like nothing is just totally done here. You could still turn this around, be brothers, whatever, love each other. I'm pretty sure my sister-in-law still hates me, though, because I tormented her when I was a kid. I'm gonna do, no matter how long it takes. Alright, well that's it for Steven. A little bit of a lost cause most of the time, but it seems like he finally started to get his stuff together towards the end. And I don't know, man, there's a lot of damn episodes with this guy. This guy is literally like a season of Lost or something like that. There's just a lot to unpack here, so we'll have to keep going, see if he actually kept going down the same path. But alright guys, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see y'all later. Bye!